In today's news, Nyron Erickson extradited to the U.S. Dive sites within the BVI have been rated among the best in the world. De Castro lauds Women's Football Committee and Virgin Islands Softball Association receives $22,000 ahead of the regional tournament in St. John. In addition to that, Perlina or Scatliff Leonard has taken to District 6. We have the details of this and so much more when 284 News returns. One. Uh. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. My name is Kamal Haynes. Most of you know me from 284 News, but now you get to see me in a different light on my very own show called Health is Well. We have Joel Turnbull. I don't want you to arch your back when you're pulling down. Milton McLean. First of all, right, your footwork. Stephen Payne. That was a 9 out of 10. I know you got the service down pat. Steve Augustine. He did a pretty hard workout today, so perhaps... And as you can see, it's actually... <laughs> you're feeling it. Lonzo Boynes. Taekwondo. Adam Morrells. I'll speak as if you're an absolute beginner. I uh, am an absolute beginner. You are an absolute beginner. And Seth Graham. It bites. It will bite. Everything will <laughs> <laughs> Get your water, get your fruits and veggies and experience a wealth of knowledge about getting healthy. Welcome everyone, I'm Ron Grant, coming to you live and direct from Tortola in the Virgin Islands. It is Tuesday, February 28th, 2023. Thank you so much for joining us. We are happy to be bringing you the latest out of Tortola and the region, as well as beyond. Beginning our newscast on the local scene here in the Virgin Islands, yesterday, February 27th, 2023, Virgin Islander Nyron Erickson was extradited to the United States. Video footage showed Erickson being escorted by armed officers and put onto a helicopter which reportedly transported him to the St. Thomas USVI. And of course, we take a look at documents which were dated February 15, 2023, received by our newsroom, which showed that the Privy Council rejected Naren Erickson's application for an appeal against the governor's order to have him extradited to the United States of America on charges of conspiracy to launder monetary funds from outside the USA and illegally transporting those funds into the United States of America. Now, in a documented detail uh, decision, the Privy Council stated, and I quote, having considered the application for permission to appeal from a judgment of the Court of Appeal of the Eastern Korean Supreme Court, dated August 11th, 2022, in the matter of Naren Erickson versus United States of America, and having considered written submission from the parties, we have agreed to report to your majesty as your opinion that one application for permission to appeal should be refused because the application does raise an arguable point of law. Now, additionally, the Privy Council also stated that, and I quote, His Majesty King Charles III was pleased by and with the advice of his Privy Council to approve the report and to order that those charged with administering the government of the British Virgin Islands and all others whom it may concern are to ensure that it is punctually observed and obeyed. Now, of course, that documentation uh, which we received, the video footage, uh, will not be shown, but that is that story. Continuing on, the beauty and diversity of the dive sites across the territory's waters has been highlighted and rated as among the very best within the world. This is according to a review by the deputy editor in Scuba Association Media, Carolyn Robertson Brown, who traveled to the territory to take part in the BVI's Rec Week 2023, an annual event. Now, the photojournalist Brown said she was left speechless by the numerous breathtaking dive sites she visited during her week-long stay. I have to say, uh, my husband and I have dived all over the Caribbean. And when we got here straight away, I think the first thing was all of the dive centers were so welcoming. Everyone they've met has really been welcoming. And then as soon as you went underwater, we were just blown away by the diversity of dive sites, the marine life you've got here, and the wrecks are just amazing. Robertson Brown also said that the dive sites within the BVI, from her observation and experience, are among the top sites within the region. I think the BVI 
isn't necessarily listed as one of the top dive destinations, but having dived it all of this week, you know, we've dived all over the Caribbean and it's right up there. It is, it's easily up there with Cayman Islands, Dominica, all of those other islands that you normally hear about for diving. The Rhone, the wreck of the Rhone, it's a world-class dive site. It's world-class, not just Caribbean class. And obviously a week of uh, activity, a week of pictures. What's next for you now as it relates to that information, that documentation you would have done over the past week? Where does that go now? Sure. So first of all, we'll get back and we'll start editing our images, editing our video, getting all of that sorted. And then what will happen is we'll do a series of blogs on scubaverse.com. And then it will be in the summer issue of Dive Travel Adventures magazine, which is a magazine that goes out to 10,000 divers in the UK. It's a free magazine. Uh, and so lots of people, will, it's going to be a 10 page feature. So it's going to be a big feature in the magazine. Everyone's going to read about the adventures that we've had. Meanwhile, Director of Tourism, Mr. Clive McCoy, said that the Tourist Board will be doing more in promoting the BVI as a dive destination. The producers came to us and told us uh, earlier, late last year, that they wanted to do this event. And um, as you know, um, diving is one of the here in the British Virgin Islands. Uh, we're known to be the best wreck diving destination in the entire Caribbean. So we jumped on board. We are uh, facilitated um, with some funds <laughs> to help them out with in terms of um, um, some cleanup campaigns that they wanted to do, bringing in some journalists and so forth, promoting the event. Uh, and from what I gathered, the divers that have came in for the event have noted how wonderful the diving is here in the British Virgin Islands. They are telling us that the diving here is competitive across the region. Now I knew we were competitive, but I, to see how their eyes lit up about it, it lets us know that we need to put a little bit more effort into um, promoting the sector a little bit more so we can make this event bigger. And um, if we can, um, if we can actually try to tie it into the off peak season so we can stymie that, that's a great way for us to keep uh, generating money into the, um, the, the, the economy. Director McCoy said he is hopeful that by further promoting the BVI's dive product that it will help to create activity in the periods outside of the usual tourist season. We're doing various events across the globe, in uh, the UK as well as in uh, the United States of America um, to promote diving in the destination, especially our wreck diving. Um, uh, uh, most people know, yeah, here in the BVI, our, our, peak, our off peak season starts in June and goes all the way down into to November. One of the things that we're trying to do is stymie that off peak season. We don't want no off peak season in BVI. We want people coming all the time to the destination. And this is a good opportunity for us to do it. So uh, we're going to work a little bit closer with the BVI Scuba Association to put things together so we can get more persons here for the event. And up next, everyone, we have more local news. We'll be right back after a quick commercial break. Mm. Is that my lunch? Mm? Is that my lunch? Mm -mm. We're like the co-worker that doesn't eat your lunch. I'm John. I'm John. CG Insurance. Good like that. There are many ways to enjoy life, like so many ways to count on popular. Father Jesus, that learn your long like church souls. Hmm. All right, enjoy the rest of the day. Next customer line, please. Hold on a second. Yes, Sonny Boy, come, yes, Sonny. Good morning. Good morning, Sonny Boy. You must have cut from the people. It's okay, it's okay. I'll take care of you. What? No, no man, take care of me. How may I assist you? Yes, please. You want a top of Eh? You want top of power? Eh? Join a prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top-up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with top-up 
return of Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT top of is sold and top of your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, you want top of all. Welcome back, everyone. Minister for Education and Sports, the Honorable Cherie B. De Castro, has lauded the territory's growing female football league and the FA Women's Football Committee as they continue on a mission to, and I quote, break the bias in the often male-dominated sport. Now, she spoke with our team at the recent FA Women's Festival within East End. Engagement in the sport, she said, is extremely beneficial to the academics as athletes and students must be similarly disciplined to excel within their pursuits. Now, she says she hopes to see more opportunities for young people within the Virgin Islands to take up activities which allow them to learn and be passionate about something positive. While she has admitted that she has never played football, De Castro says she is up to the challenge and encourages others to take advantage of the opportunities presented in the sport. So that's huge for me, right? Especially as a young person, as a minister, um, I would have had the honor to be able to with the support of the people sitting in this seat currently. And I would have broken up bias uh, that existed in terms of young women and more so young people in general being in politics. And to see these young people uh, coming out in a male-dominated sport and really just having the gumption, the gall, the audacity to say, let me try it. Maybe I could be good at it. It's huge for me. And just to see the coaches and the women on the, on the committee who would have been the driving force behind even thinking that something like this is possible, it speaks volumes to me. And I think this is only one sport, um, and they're leading the way. And hopefully we'll see more group sports in terms of women being able to interact and truly dominate uh, in like football. So that's huge, right? The discipline and the core values that you learn when you are part of a team, when you're playing a sport, is what really cements a uh, legacy in terms of, you know, just seeking to, you know, remain focused on your academics, you know? And, it, and it's a parallel thing, right? Because because of the type of coaching and the values that they have, you know, I know that they are positions where you know you can't play if you misbehave you can't play if you get into certain things that are untowards and so it presents a real opportunity that if you're passionate about something you don't misbehave because you want to be a part of it and I think we need to have more opportunities like this whether through sports whether through the arts whether through science technology the various areas so that we could truly create some opportunities for young people to be, not be unchallenged um, and you know really have something to be passionate about focused on and want to you know live out um, in the future i've never played football right but if you know me i don't mind trying something um, i believe you know life begins at the end of your comfort zone so if i go out there i'm gonna be uncomfortable which means i'm gonna be living so i don't mind trying it um, so hey maybe one day you're gonna see me out there kicking a ball um, the schools are a direct platform where we could get our young people involved um, we could allow them to go out into the schools you know have some talks with some of our students and really build that interest and get them up if there's any way that the ministry could help even outside of that we'd we'll be extremely willing and i think she's well on her way we do we, when we do the counter i think that at least at um, you know, 30, 40 young people out here. So I definitely before the end of the year, even before then, I believe she'll reach her goal and hopefully we'll be able to, you know, see the fruition of this even beyond that goal because once the interest is there, once the passion is there, there's no limits. The Virgin Islands Softball Baseball Association was the recipient of a total of $22,000 which will assist the women's national softball team as they prepare to head to the 2023 Eastern Caribbean Amateur Softball Confederation Championships in St. John, USVI. Minister for Sports, the Honorable Sharibi De Castro, on behalf of the government of the Virgin Islands, handed over a $12,000 check to the national team on Monday evening. She left encouraging words with the team ahead of their trip on Tuesday today, uh, which they should have arise, arrived by now, uh, to St. John, USVI. So I'm just here on behalf of the government of the Virgin Islands to give you all a contribution to go towards uh, your games in St. John. We know you'll do an amazing job and we're really happy to support uh, this sport, especially women in sports, and we know you all will do an exemplary job. We look forward to you bringing home the W and for sure just bring, you know, have, have as much fun as you can, but most importantly, you know, whatever the outcome is, we love y'all and we appreciate the work that you're going out there to do. Thank you. Thank you. In addition, President of the BVI Olympic Committee, Mr. Ephraim Penn, also presented the association with a check valued at $7,000. He said the Olympic Committee has supported women's softball within the territory of the Virgin Islands for a number of years and sees a promising future for the sport within the territory. 
and I'm thanking you guys for sticking with it. It's, I know it's not easy to um, compete internationally, Neville can tell you, on Herbal Smith, and I, it should be a great opportunity. Um, you know, we, we put some funds into Lady Southwall in the last quadrennial, we, and the team went to Santo Domingo to do the Pan Am qualifier. And um, it's great to see now that we are continuing that trend and the age group of the team give us hope that there's a future and that uh, we'll be seeing you trying out for more national teams and more international competition. I know the goal is to qualify for the Central American and Caribbean Games in San Salvador later this year. So I wish you all the best and good luck and uh, make us proud. Thank, Thank you. you. Also contributing to the business national team was a business owner of Tradewinds Mexican Grill, Sherma Molly Penn Maduro. Her check of $3,000 was a direct contribution to the national team's newly designed outfits, which they are collaboration, uh, of course, in collaboration with a popular locally clothing brand, Treffle Designs. Take a look. The team, as always, you know, I'm always a part of you guys. I'm unfortunately can't travel this um, session, but um, we did, Tradewinds Mexican Grill did contribute $3,000 to go towards the uniforms that we you are wearing today. Um, this These uniform prints will be used forever with the national teams. Um, we plan to do some branding, some hats, some other gears. So, you know, it's going to bring some extra added funds, necessary funds to the association. So that's Tradewinds Mexican Grill. Thank you, Tradewinds. Manager and co coach, the Honorable Neville, uh, all popularly known as uh, Sheep, thanked all the parties uh, for their meaningful contributions, which will assist the team tremendously as they aim to win the upcoming tournament. Yeah. On behalf of the BBN national team, we miss our ball team. We'd like to thank you all very much for the sponsor and the contribution you made, and we will bring back home the win. Yeah. Yeah. The 16-member team representing the British Virgin Islands are Akira Phillip, Bria Smith, Clary Scatliff, Darie Malone, Javelin Frett, Jalissa Potter, Janine Niles, Kenisha Stout, Kenisha Powell, Kimia Matthias, Lebekeda Foy, Marissa Malone, Milani Stout, Shaquille Foy, Shanique, Shaniqua, that is, Foy Johnson, and Thea Cook. Also, the team World Head will be headed by the coach and manager, the Honorable Neville Sheepsmith, and assistant coaches and trainers, Shamori Robinson and Des Moines Hodge. Of course, we congratulate each and every one of them as they continue to represent the Virgin Islands, and we will, of course, keep you posted uh, within the coming week. Was it a bird, a plane, aliens? None of the above. The bright light that wowed Virgin Islanders on the night of Monday, February 27th was in fact a front row seat to the launch of a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket carrying a new batch of Starlink satellites into orbit. Now, while the light show uh, became visible across the Northern Caribbean after 7 p.m. that night, the 230-foot rocket carrying the 21 V2 mini satellites blasted from SpaceX Cape Carnival uh, Space Force Station within Florida about an hour earlier. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Engine start and liftoff of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, launching a new generation of broadband connectivity for the Starlink network. Falcon 9 has cleared the towers. Now as the rocket shot across the sky, it gave an impression 
oppressive, impressive show, sorry, brightening the night sky, fluing uh, a lot of conspiracy theories and as onlookers questioned, rare unexpected visuals and flawlessly performing its intended task. Now, its first stage, uh, boosters are said to have landed on a designated platform in the Atlantic Ocean. There a possibly of a similar uh, display within a uh, matter of weeks, so we could look out for that. A Virgin Islands, a SpaceX could attempt to launch its new generation uh, Starship rocket with nearly 10 times the payload lift capacity as of Monday evening's Falcon Knight rocket now for the first time. In addition, the timeless uh, conspiracy theories that have continued, uh, but particularly for the launch, are reportedly tentative given the development delays faced by the program. Of course, this caught the attention of many Virgin Islanders and we will keep you posted if for whatever reason we see uh, the bright lights uh, shoot across our skies, skies within the Virgin Islands. Up next, we have more local news. We'll be right back. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284 Media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. Is someone going to get that? Hello. Hello. I, I, so nice of you to have clean up for us. Hi, baby. Uh, okay. We're like in-laws that don't show up unannounced. Don't worry. I've got this. CG Insurance. Good like that. Freeze. Choose your mix. Choose your flavor. Hun, it's asking for your password. Huh? You were logged out. I need the password. Oh, uh, uh, B R. What's the rest? Um, B R A N D I, the number four, E D E R? Who's Brandy? We're like the password that isn't your ex girlfriend's name. CG Insurance. Good like that. I should have changed it. You should have. You're, you're right. Welcome back, everyone. As you know, the journey to elections 2023 in the British Virgin Isles has kicked off. 7th District Independent Candidate Mrs. Perlene R. Scatliff Leonard took to the 7th District this past Saturday, February 25th, to address the 7th District constituents in her quest to represent them within the next House of Assembly. Now, the candidate launch was cheered by former legislator himself and sports commentator Mr. Walwyn E. Bruley and saw selections from and speeches by youth members within the 7th District community. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with profound honor and a high degree of pride that I stand before you tonight at a long look ticket. This place which made me into the woman that I am today offering myself up as a candidate seeking your support to send me to the next House of Assembly to represent you, my people of District 7. I am indeed thrilled that our God has favored me with the life and the fight that I have within me to offer myself with confidence as a an independent candidate in this year's general election. District 7, we are about to make further history. District 7 does not fit in. We stand out. It is past time to let this territory know that we are resilient. We are not second-class citizens. We have common sense contributions to make. 
Our district will not sit idly by anymore, waiting to be told when. We will step forward boldly because we have a bold, sovereign leader in the person of Pearlene Scatliff Leonard, who will make sure that our voices are heard. District 7, we matter too. The former director of Water and Sewage Department recently retired from the public service after serving for some 33 years. She has since been very vocal about inaccuracies within the public service that seemingly have hindered public servants from excelling. In her remarks, Scatliff Leonard referred to herself as a doer and not someone who will simply make promises. At the Stick It and Long Look, a very small audience listened to some of the areas of concern she stated, if elected, she will address, including district beautification as well as the well-being of the elderly and youth. She took some time to pay homage to the 7th District forefathers who have paved the way. This is not the first time history is being made in this district. We celebrate champions like Moses Stevens, Leslie Malone, Ivan Fox, and Terence B. Letsom, who are rightfully displayed on a wall of flame right on your right. And we thank you, Dr. Pickering, and the Heritage Committee for capturing this part of our history in that manner. And we will continue to contribute and build on that foundation because there are many other persons who have contributed to the development of this district. In all of our communities from Sophie Bay to Long Look, that must be recognized. Had all of these individuals stood on the sideline and watched progress go by without placing their feet down, this district would not have been where it was some 20 years ago or where it is today. We are forever indebted to all four parents for the time and energies they took to build up District 7 in their time. They had unblemished passion and pride in serving District 7, delivering proper and prosperous solutions for this district. Regarding her various initiatives, Scatliff Leonard said she will seek private partnership in order to make these visions a reality, stating, and I quote, we send a uh, clarion call to the private sector that we depend on you to help us build our territory. So we look for you uh, to support us in all that we do and set ourselves out to do. The mother and grandmother has since declaring her candidacy, stated her desire to focus on the family and less fortunate in her community. She recently said at that very same launch, when families are able to provide for themselves, we create healthier, safer, and more prosperous communities. A young man from the 7th District spoke on her behalf. Tonight is feel, I feel very good. I feel very humble and I feel very pleased. I feel very good. Reason why? We have a real leader coming. I can repeat that. We have a real leader coming. Long look, Eastern, wake up. We have a real leader coming. So, all, who, all the components, all the opponents, you know what? Beware. 2023, we here. We're going forward. We are not going backward. We have been left behind. For many years, you know how long? Too long. It's a shame. It's a sad feeling. I'm Viewers, that is it for today's News Roundup. I want to thank you so much for joining us. I'm Ron Grant. It is always a pleasure bringing you the latest out of Totola in the Virgin Islands, as well as across the region and beyond. And do have a beautiful rest of the day. A happy Tuesday's wish to each and every one of you. I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Introducing a show poised to help guide modern day men into 21st century distinguished gentlemen. It doesn't always involve suits and bow ties, but raw, real life lessons. I'm taking you outside in the field to share the journey of some of the BBI's the best and brightest men. From East End to West End, Virgin Guara to Joss Van Dyke, 
of not forgetting Anigata. Our Virgin Islands gentlemen are doing the damn thing. We are the movers and shakers of this generation. The art of a distinguished gentleman. Season 4 by yours truly, Ron Grant. Raising a generation of greatness. Wednesdays at 8pm on 284 Media.